As always, just a quick heads up, this is not a tutorial. This is just a video of me talking about some of the things that I am currently working on, which means that this video might be a bit long. It'll definitely be raw and unedited, but I will be sharing some of the behind the scenes stuff and uh, I'll be talking about smart tools. Now, if you have purchased smart tools from us, uh, then you know a lot about them and thank you so much for your support. We wouldn't be able to do what we do here at Ad Ucra Media if it wasn't for awesome people like you. So thank you. And if you are new to this channel and you don't know anything about smart tools, uh, basically they are After Effects tools that I developed over the years as I worked on projects. And when I found myself repeating the same steps over and over again, that's when I would create a tool. And over time, I have a bunch of different tools, things like Smart Sizer, Smart Anchor, Smart Animator. And eventually I combine them all into one bundle called Smart Tools. And when I say Smart Tools, I, re I refer to all of these tools in here. So in this video, I just wanna update you on where I'm at with them, what direction I am heading in, and just in general, what tool is gonna be updated next. That's what I'm gonna talk about. So let's talk about that for a second. So as you can see, I have like a bunch of tools here. On the right side, we have tools that have, um, I wouldn't say they don't look like they don't really look similar, but they have similar workflow and they all have top shelf, right? They have top shelf with all these buttons and the first button is always the run button. So uh, naturally, you, if you know how to use one but, uh, one tool, you kind of know how to use all of them because you understand that I can just make changes and then I can run the tool by clicking on this run button. So they all have that similar feel and uh, it, it helps especially with you know, if you worked on one tool, you wanna to go to the, the other one, you kind of understand the workflow because it's very similar. So I realized the importance in that because I do have some tools that are a part of this uh, bundle, these four, that are not like this and they don't have the top shelf. And uh, I realized it's a problem. And so, so I am slowly, as you can see, I've migrated these into this area, but I am trying to get the, the other tools into this area as well to where they have top shelf with all that stuff. And I have started, uh, in fact, I already finished Smart Sizer and it has a top shelf. We'll, I'll talk about that in this video and I will be releasing that next week. But I am also working on Smart Rect and it will have smart or it will have the top shelf as well with all the tools because it makes sense to just click on one button to run it because right now, Smart Anchor, you have to click on these anchors to run it or uh, like these, you have to click on each button. And I can see that being confusing you kind of have to know what you're doing. And uh, yeah, so I definitely recognize that problem. So number one, user experience is important to me. So I am trying to make them all look similar um, as far as workflow goes. And then the second thing I want to do also um, is each top shelf has like a last button as, as basically like a question mark icon about the tool, right? They all have them. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if you go to any of them, let's go to Smart Animator. So if you go to this one, you can see it's in here. When you click on it, it'll take you to this panel right here. And what I'm trying to do next, I want to have uh, some kind of a link or something that says a uh, quick guide to get started or click here to get started with this tool. And then you click on it, it'll take you to a page where you will have like a written and maybe a video instructions on how to get started with this tool. I realize that's something that's definitely needed. And so I'm waiting to do that when I finish this, when I convert all of them into the same look. And once I have it all in the same look, then I definitely wanna focus on uh, telling you more about the tool, how to quickly get started. So that way, when you get back to it, you can quickly get, get to the tool and, and, and not waste any time. But I am waiting to update these first to do that. So I've started the process, I'm heading that way. And uh, the end goal, obviously, is to combine them all together into one tool, but that's a bit later down the road. Okay, so let's talk about a Smart Rect for a second. So if you go to Smart Rect, this is the current version of Smart Rect. And uh, if you use Smart Rect, um, then you probably got used to it and you're totally fine. But uh, I realized that Smart Rect, is a, is, the design of it is not very easy. Like uh, you kind of have to know what you're doing uh, because to run it, you have to click on these buttons and uh, it's definitely not not good. So I, I have spent some time to redesign the, the look of it as far as um, how, how it's gonna look. And uh, we have animator, smart animator. Notice how we have um, like the top shelf, we have these tabs. So instead of having this drop down menu to go to a margin or fill, uh, I'm actually working 
on the way to have tabs drive that. Because we already have this workflow with Smart Animator to where if you want to go to size, you just go to size, rotation. And when you click on these, it will take you in here, down here to whatever you click on. So that's, I mean, that's definitely a, a much quicker way. So you don't have to click on a drop down read. You can just quickly memorize these icons and you can go to them quickly. So that's definitely something that I'm doing with Smart Rect. In fact, let me show you a quick demo. Obviously, it's it's just, it's beta. I mean, I'm definitely just working on this. So, but I do have a like a basic uh, layout of how I think it should look. So if you go to Smart Rec, this is what it looks like now. To go to size, you click on size, you'll see size in here. These are always visible. And to run it, you have to click on top and it'll create one with the top. So now I do have a top shelf. I do have a run button. So to run it, you have to click on the run. But to select the anchor, you click on anchor and you can select the anchor, say top left maybe. Maybe to rename it, you click on name and you rename the rectangle to whatever. Size, you just click here and you have size options instead of going there and seeing it here. And uh, I do have like resize option. I'm trying to figure out a way here. This might change to where you can select the feature. Do you want it to just create a rectangle or maybe when you select the layer, do you want it to be auto resizable? So that's what that, that will be. But uh, I'll flesh it out to where it's more simple. So that's where I'm heading with this. Obviously, we have sliders, we have these, all of that. Um, and then we have um, margin. So we definitely have margin. In the past, margin was this, but now we definitely have like a better visual. So we have the top, bottom, left, right. You can adjust on these. Um, and so then we have uh, color. And now they're all together instead of just going to fill and stroke. Uh, they're all together and you can disable fill stroke all that jazz and here you can adjust the the width of the stroke you have roundness something we didn't have that before you can adjust the roundness based on percentage or pixel so then we have uh time size at time it's kind of like the source track the time method if you're familiar with expressions you want to do it based on layer in point, a middle point, out point, current time so i'll cover that later and then the last one here is the connect or if you've done any anything with Smart Rect, when you copy Smart Rect in the text into a new composition, it breaks it. It's just After Effects doesn't support it. And you have to kind of manually go into Smart Rect and relink it to the text layer. Well, I'm working on a way to fix that with just a simple button. You just select the two layers, boom, and it will connect it. So that's something I'm working on, uh, but it's still work in progress. And, but as you can see, we have the top shelf, we have the mask and parent feature. It's all gonna be here. We have um, the same thing as we have here in the smart animator. So these are um, default and like basically presets. So you can set presets. So that's gonna be there. And yeah, that's smart rect. And that's the direction I'm heading in uh, with this. If you have any input, any kind of feedback, definitely let me know in the comments below. But so far, this is what I wanted to look like, but obviously some things can change. And we do have this as well. I'm not sure if I mentioned it. We can reset things globally or locally. Globally meaning like on all tabs, when you reset it will, all those things will reset. And you if you have it set to a local, when you hit reset, it will only reset whatever tab you're in. So we have that already here as well. So that's something consistent with all, all of the tools. So Smart Rect, I think you basically have a good idea of what it, might look like obviously we're still working on that and by we i mean i so i'm still working on it now let's uh let's talk about smart sizer and um it's right here so let me put it to the top here so smart sizer is another problem so as you can see we don't have the top shelf here so i had to kind of think of a way to make it more simple and by the way the name i'm not sure if i mentioned in this video yet but someone uh referenced it uh, I think they called it Smart Resizer. And I actually like that because we already have Smart Size. I have a tool called Smart Size and then we have a Smart Sizer. And I realized that uh, it's very similar and sometimes people confuse it. So I'm thinking about renaming it to Smart Resizer. So whoever mentioned it in the email, thank you for giving that idea, but I might change the name of it to Smart Resizer. Let me know in the comments below what you think because it makes sense that resizes it. So that's probably a good name for it. But let me show you what it looks like now. So let me bring this up real quick. Smart Reese or Sizer. Let me bring pull this up here. So this is what it looks like now. And it's much smaller, obviously. But uh, let me go to this. Yeah, let's go to this comp here. So the way it works, it's pretty simple. I did I did fix a lot of the code issues when uh, a lot of you've been 
asking me for some features, which I'll cover that more in detail next week when I release it. But essentially the way it works, it's simple. Obviously we have a top shelf. So you select the layer and based on your selection, so maybe I'll select this one, that one, and maybe I'll select this one last. And based on what you select last, let's say I go to fit to, so fit to, and I'm gonna say, hey, let's stretch it to the width of the text. So I have that selected. I can adjust the size if I want to, margin, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to do this. And based on that, I can run it and watch this. So I don't have a code selected. It doesn't just basically it doesn't apply any code to the scale property. So when I run it, it will stretch all of my selection to the last selected layer. And for some things, it comes in very handy. Now, obviously, when you start typing, it it it, it doesn't you know it it doesn't do that. It, so it doesn't do that continuously. Okay, so that's one. Now you can do the same thing by sizing it to the last selected layer, which I already have the same selection. But instead of um, instead of it being um, basically stretching it, we're gonna maintain the aspect ratio. And if you hover over this, it'll explain it to you. So I'm gonna select, it does the same thing, but it will maintain the text where it's not stretching. So let's run this, boom. And yeah, there you go, that's perfect. Now. Where it becomes very powerful is when you create templates. And I use this for template creation all the time. By template creation, I mean mogrits. When I create mogrits, I use this tool all the time. So uh, when you activate the code and you say, hey, let's stretch it. And so now with the same thing, we may have the same selection. I run this and watch this. It stretched everything, but not only that, when I type it, it will maintain that to that width. And at any point you can, change the width of that layer, but go over here. It creates all these options. You can adjust the width and uh, fit to options. All of that is in here. So, I mean, that comes in very handy for tools. Now, let me undo this. You can also do the same thing and maintain the aspect ratio, but watch this, watch what happens. So it's gonna do it based on this size. So if I run this, it will resize everything to that width, but it will not touch this one because it's shorter, right? But if you keep typing, so if you keep typing, it will start resizing it to that width. Now it also adjusts to the height. So let's do this. So it will maintain that height or that width until it gets to the width of that and then it'll start scaling down. So I've used this on templates all the time. It's super handy and I'm only scratching the surface what this tool can do. I mean, we have all kinds of options, even for like images, you know, for example, I don't have an image here handy, but um, if you bring in like a logo or something like that, you can quickly convert it into a pixel size. So imagine imagine this is a an image, right? So I'm gonna quickly show you this. So let's imagine this is like a, an image of some sort, uh, and like a logo. And you can quickly say, hey, let's stretch to both sides. Let's apply the code. And now it basically converts scale property to pixel size. So you can adjust basically based on pixels. Maybe you wanted 500 pixels. Boom, it's gonna adjust to 500 by 500. So you can, or that's 5,000. So yeah, you can definitely convert any image to uh, a rectangle that gives you a precise pixel value that you can use on templates and all kinds of stuff. And I'll definitely share more on that. Another cool thing about this, I'll show you this real quick. So let's go back to this text uh, where we were before. So this right here, we don't have anything applied here. I'm gonna disable the um, expression. So the cool thing about the size, you can say, hey, I want all of this to be set on the width, maybe to 500 pixel, right? And you can go over here. And uh, so 500 pixel, that's good. And uh, let's see our fit to, do you want to do it? Yeah, let's do maintain the aspect ratio. So I want them all to be exactly 500 pixels. Boom, as you can see, 500 pixels. And I can prove it to you. So let's see, what is that? So if I draw a rectangle, what size is this? So let's type 500. So as you can see, it's pretty correct. So it's dead on. And not only that, I do have some other options. So let me undo this real quick. We also have uh, this icon here. When you click on it, you have all these options. So you can say based on layer width, let's do like a comp width. So it types keyword comp when you select these and say comp and you can run this. Boom, it's gonna do it based on the comp width. Anyway, a lot of different options. This tool is very useful and I definitely need to uh, do more tutorials on it, but I, I wanted to make make it user friendly as far as the layout goes because it's so much easier to tell you about it than 
uh, the way it used to be like this. You're like, what the heck is going on here? But the way here, you kind of understand it better. So we have like the fit to options. We have the size options. We have margin options that you can quickly adjust. Uh, you can reset it. So that's the margin that you can add. And I'll cover that more. And then we have size at time. It has to do with when you want the size, like at the beginning of the layer, especially with text animation. And then I do have global reset. So you can reset, like for example, all of these, all of these tabs in here, you can just reset, boom, it will reset all of them. Or you can just do local. For example, if I have this one and maybe something in here, if I set it to local and I hit reset, it will only reset in here, but not in the size. So again, it's similar to what you would see in the Smart React and the Smart Animator. So I am trying to keep them consistent so that you can kind of uh, carry the same um, kind of workflow user experience into the next tool and so on. So that's really all I got for you. Uh, I hope uh, that wasn't too much, but definitely let me know what you think. If you, as you were watching this, maybe you have some ideas for some of the features you would love to see in some of these tools, definitely let me know in the comments below. And uh, again, I wanna thank you for purchasing our tools. Thank you for your support. Again, we wouldn't be able to do what we do here if it wasn't for your support. So thank you so much. You guys have been awesome. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Proknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.